Hello everyone, this is Neil with Catalyst Machine Works and you're looking at a new product from us. This is a exciting new product we've got coming out in late December, early January. This guy is called the Speed Addict 210-R. So we're keeping with the, uh, the Speed Addict name and continuing on with a new, brand new design. This is uh, smaller than anything we've done in the past. This is 210 millimeters from this prop over to that prop, designed for 5 inch props. Uh, specifically, really the bullnose props are the, are the uh, prop of choice for this guy. You see uh, two, blade, two blade on here. You can put three blade if you really want to spice it up. Um, so what is this thing? This is a race specific design so it's it's a no compromise machine really designed to go out uh, to a race and just annihilate the competition to be very competitive uh, allow you to you know run at high rates of speed take sharp corners and uh, and just get to the end faster than the other guy. So what does that all mean with a drone racer? You know, what, what makes a good drone racer? Why is this thing you're looking at here better or faster than the other guy? And so that's what I want to talk to you about in this video and describe. Um, it's rare that manufacturers get down to the nuts and bolts and sort of the the engineering decisions that were made and why they were made. Um, I'd like to do that because there's a lot of there's a lot of different frames on the market. Um, some of these look really similar. I mean, you look at one, you know, in a picture on a website, and you look at another, and they may look real similar. And you go, well, what's the difference here? Well, that's what I'm going to talk to you about. All right, so let's get into it. What makes a good drone racer? Um, you know, in any type of racing, you hear a lot of term terms being thrown around, characteristics and such, and um, you know, you may know what they mean, how it relates to a different type of machine, like let's say a sports car, for instance. Um, but most people don't really know how that relates to a drone. Um, so I'm going to start real high level and we'll go through each of these characteristics, but we'll get into each one and then uh, talk through them and, and explain what we did on the Speed Addict 210R to achieve, uh, to achieve our goals with regards to those characteristics. So the first one on the list, and these are in order of importance in our opinion, is agility. Uh, you want a very agile craft. Uh, the next one is power to weight. You want a high power, low weight machine. And then we need durability. You can't get to the end of the race if you're out of the race. Uh, these things crash a lot. That's just the nature of the beast. I and mean, you're hauling ass, you know, a few feet off the ground and going around things, you're, you're going to crash. So you want something that's durable, something that can take a crash, something that you're just going to maybe bust your props, uh, go over there, turn some, change some props out and get back in the race. Uh, the last one is aerodynamic parasitic drag. All right. So, um, what what do those mean? What does that all mean? Let's let's go to the first one and and discuss it. The first one I mentioned is agility, and the definition of agility is the ability to rapidly and efficiently change direction or speed. You want a drone that can transition from a very high rate of speed coming into a corner to a rapid deceleration before the corner, make as tight a possible turn around that corner, uh, be it a gate or a flag or a tree or whatever, whatever in the world it is you're turning around, and then accelerate as quickly as possible uh, out of the turn. 
So maneuverability is key in any type of racing and drone racing specifically, you need a very maneuverable quote unquote craft. Uh, the faster you can get into that turn, the faster you can get out, the better. All right, I want to discuss the first uh, characteristic on the list, which was agility. We believe this to be probably the most important aspect of a drone racer. It's right up there with power to weight, but you need something that can really get through the corners. Um, I've actually been at quite a few races where you know, a, a slower drone, something that had lower power motors, but was lighter and could turn faster, could change its direction faster, you know, beat out the faster drones that had higher uh, straight line speed. It happens all the time, it happens in all types of track racing. That's what track racing is about. It's about getting around the corner, getting in and out. So what... Uh, what did we do on this to make it agile? You know, why is it why is it so so awesome? As I like to say, I love the word awesome. I probably say that a few times in this in this video, so forgive me. Um, first one is lightweight. You want this thing to be as lightweight as possible. Um, the Speed Addict bare frame. Get this here, turn this on. Where's my frame? Okay. The Speed Attic bare frame, I hope you can see that, is 98 grams. All right, so that's without the uh, included power distribution board. Uh, we've got a power distribution board that comes with the frame. Uh, but the bare frame itself, and that's typically how most manufacturers you know, weigh their frames, is the, is the bare carbon fiber fasteners. Um, this is also coming with this antenna mount, right? So this is 98 grams with the antenna mount. But that's how we did it. So that is, that is a super light uh, chassis, race chassis. All right, another uh, attribute to make this thing agile that we targeted during our design process is center of gravity. Um, a lot of people talk about center of gravity with drones. Um, that's for good reason, because in any craft that flies through the air, it's got to have an ideal center of gravity. And that's a very sort of mysteri mysterious and you know, uh, confusing term because you can't really see it, you don't know wh where that is. Um, and so when you design a machine, in order to determine where the center of gravity really truly is, where it exists in 3D space, you either have to calculate it out with hand calculations, or you can use um, 3D CAD software. Banana phone Ring, 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 ring Banana phone I Okay, that's cool. Where should the center of gravity exist in one of these frames? Well, you want the center of gravity to exist exactly dead center on this flight controller. You want your flight controller to exist exactly dead center between the two, you know, the front and rear prop, and then the middle of the flight controller existing exactly centered on the on this plane, right? So this is an X-frame, so this thing is symmetric, so our flight controller exists right in the center. Okay, so that's its location in this plane. That is where we put our flight controller, right in the middle. Next, when speaking about center of gravity, you want your center of gravity 
to exist right on in this I'm talking about the Z plane now right so this plane you want your center of gravity to exist right dead center between these props right right on this line the same the same plane the same line that these props exist on because when this thing rotates on an axis let's say that it's pitching forward so it's moving forward it's pitching like this it's rotating about this point all right additionally if we look at it in this orientation the center of gravity is here on this same plane just in a different direction you want it to exist right dead center here and on this plane this thing rotates about that axis all right, so what we did is we took and we modeled up every single thing on the frame. We tinkered with the design of the frame and, and messed around. It actually took us forever um, <laughs> and located the various components. You know, is an iterative process to get it all into this, um, this setup, this configuration. But eventually, we figured out a way to get that center of gravity exactly where we wanted it. This is the 3D CAD model of our Speed Attic 210R. Uh, I'm going to show you how we achieved an ideal center of gravity with this design and what we actually did. So you're looking at the you know, final product of all of our work, but how we achieve this is to a side view of this guy and let's see where the center of gravity exists so mass properties you can see this is 458 grams uh, and here is our center of gravity so this little set of arrows this little pink set of arrows that is the center of gravity existing in 3D space in real time, right? So that center of gravity is existing right between the props here, so symmetric about these motors, and right on the line of thrust. You want it right there uh, because this thing rotates about that location. And so ideally, you want the center of gravity to exist right at that, at that rotation point, all right? So let's go to the front view and see where that thing exists when, in reference to the front view. And there we go. All right, so it's exactly centered about the, about the center plane of this, this machine and right on the line of thrust. So it's in an ideal location. Let's go to the top view. There we go. So it took us a lot of time and a lot of work to get this thing to work out like this. Um, but but we did it and we achieved it and the and the result is absolutely outstanding agility and performance of this drone. All right. So another characteristic that we targeted during the design phase of this craft in an effort to maximize its agility is moment of inertia. Um, another, another way you could describe that uh, sort of loosely is mass concentration. So where on this craft is the majority of the mass concentrated? Where is it located in reference to another location? Um, and specifically when I talk about those terms or that term, um, I'm speaking of it with regards to 
rolling, so pivoting on an axis. So this is a pitch maneuver here where it's pivoting forward, and this is a roll maneuver, okay? Well, moment of inertia is how much does this structure resist that movement? How much force is required you know, to make that movement happen? And so if you have a structure with a high moment of inertia on, let's say, roll, that means that you've got a large majority of mass concentration on the exterior of the frame, making it difficult to perform that maneuver, or more difficult to perform that maneuver. Same thing goes for this direction, or really any direction that you, that you rotate it, or yaw, for that matter. Um, so what you want to do is you want to concentrate uh, your, your mass at the center of the craft. And you may be saying, well, you just talked about that with center of gravity. You know, what the hell, they're the same thing. Well, actually, they're, they're different. Um, they're related, but they are different, and I'll explain. So let's imagine for a minute that you have this frame, and the motors are mounted on just like you see, but we've taken out all the electronics out of the center. We've taken off this top plate. We took off this. So it's basically just a bare plate carbon fiber. All of this is gone, and all you've got is these motors on the exterior. Uh, speed controllers are gone, everything. What you've got then is you have... Uh, your mass, majority of your mass, concentrated on the exterior. But at the same time, since this thing is symmetric, your center of gravity is at the center, right? So they're two different things. So you can have mass concentration located at the perimeters of the craft, while at the same time your center of gravity exists in the center. What you want to do is you want to have your center of gravity at the center while your mass concentration or most of your mass is located at the same spot in the center of the craft. So hopefully you've got a good understanding of what moment of inertia is, how it relates to a drone, and how it is different than center of gravity, but related. So what did we do to this thing to give it that low moment of inertia, um, to make it snappy in, in maneuvers and yaw and, and pitch and roll? So the biggest hallmark, you know, the, the basis of this design that makes it special is this super low deck. The ability to take this lithium battery and move it down, move it centralized as much as possible gives this thing the flight characteristics that we're so excited about. Um, in addition, this X configuration. This X configuration, by way of its geometry, is putting a lot of the mass at the center of the craft. So the arms, all this material, starts running towards the center. That also allows you to take your speed controllers and place them as close to the center of the craft as possible. The next thing that we did is we started looking at this, uh, these components that we have in this front pod, this camera cage, and these components that we have in the rear pod. Now, you know, obviously you got your camera up here, you've got your video transmitter, uh, you've got your RC receiver back here. What we did is the material that surrounds those components, we, it's very efficient use of material. So we packed everything as tightly as we could and pulled all the material in as tightly as we could, you know, made this thing um, very compact. And in the rear, you'll notice that there's only enough material to protect these components. So the, the width here is, you know, is, is really tight on those components. And there's not a lot of length. We didn't take this and extend it out some arbitrary distance. No, we packed this thing in as tightly as we could. So that keeps mass you know, more centralized. It's not just wasted mass sitting on the exterior. So it helps you to get snappy, uh, fast pitch maneuvers. Um, this craft, especially in roll, is ex exceptionally, it has an exceptionally fast ability to roll, which is really important in, uh, in going around a turn fast. All right, the next um, 
big attribute on the list here is power to weight. So we showed you the uh, the weight of the bare frame, which is this, which is uh, 98 grams. After you have added all of your electronics and you've built it all up and it's ready to fly. Hopefully you can you can see that. Um, the resulting weight is right around 339 grams. Okay, so when you add your battery, you know, if you run a thousand milliamp hour battery, you can get right around 450 grams. So when you couple that with some very powerful motors, we happen to have, uh, these are X Nova 2204 motors. These are ideal for this setup. Um, these things are wildly powerful. They produce a ton of thrust. Um, so when you take a, you know, a bullnose prop like this, this is a HQ 5 inch by 4.5 pitch bullnose, you're making a lot of thrust. And since the frame is very light, your uh, ratio of power compared to weight goes through the roof. So that does two things. That increases your overall speed, so straight line speed, uh, speed out of the corners, uh, which is acceleration, um, and basically your agility overall doing various maneuvers. All right, so let's talk about durability. Uh, as you know, these machines crash a lot. Uh, drone racers travel at high rates of speed, close to the ground, they're moving around corners and around objects and things like that, and they just crash a lot. It happens all the time. So ideally, you just want to have to replace your props, get back up in the air, and you're, you're moving again. You don't want to be in the pit stuck and you're out of the race. So we, we really thought long and hard about that. Um, so what did we do? One of the first things that we started looking at was how this thing impacts. So when you're traveling, this thing is moving at an angle. And usually it's the front of the craft that hits something because you're moving, that's the direction you're moving in. So we took and we lined up these arms with the front of the craft. So when you impact, especially into the ground, when you impact, it's distributing that load across a larger, um, a larger, we'll call it volume of material. So there's less of a chance of breaking something, especially the arms, right? You don't want to break these arms. And so it's distributing that load across this uh, large surface area. The next thing we did for frontal impacts where the majority of the force is transferred into this front cage is we made this cage unbelievably rigid and strong. So this is three millimeter carbon fiber down here. This is three millimeter carbon fiber up here. It's high quality material. We've got these fast, or I'm sorry, these uh, standoffs here. You'll notice that these standoffs have been machined in the center. This, compared to most standoffs, this is a wide uh, top and bottom portion. So where it's interfacing with the carbon fiber has a large diameter. Okay, so what that's doing is it's distributing the load on a larger surface area of carbon fiber, so you have less of a chance of cracking the carbon fiber. Um, now, if we had just left this thing alone and, and had a nice, thick, you know, large um, standoff, it's going to be heavy. So we made sure to machine out the middle where we didn't need that material to keep them light. All right, so the next thing that we did is we looked at, well, what happens if you hit an arm, right? So you're just trucking along and you come across and the fence takes this and hits this arm. Okay, so when we, when we moved this deck down, right, we had to start adding material here to the sides. And it has the advantageous effect for durability of an arm impact in that you have this material here. So when you have something hit this arm, it's basically a torque that is put into this interface 
right here where the arm joins into the fuselage. Now, imagine you didn't have this material. That means you've got a longer distance from here to where it interfaces. So you've got a bigger lever arm trying to rip this thing off of the, of the fuselage. So the more material that you add here, the smaller lever arm you have and the less stress that's going to go into this interface. Our team pilots and I have been flying this design for some time now and we crash this thing constantly. And we have yet to break one of these arms. This is a very, this is a very uh, rigid and tough little, little structure. So it's very durable and crashes. All right, the last item on the list that I want to discuss is parasitic aerodynamic drag. And this is defined as the amount of force that is acting in the opposite direction to the direction you're traveling. Uh, I say that the word parasitic because it, 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 this force tends to be a parasite to the amount of power that you're having to put into the system to travel in the direction you want to go. So the less drag that you have, the less force acting in the opposite direction, uh, the less power it takes to travel at a certain speed. So with less, uh, with less drag on the craft, you can go at higher speeds uh, more efficiently. Now, when this thing is traveling, let's say that you're, you're, you're really hauling butt and you're you're hauling ass and you are going at about an inclination of 50 degrees or so. That looks like about 50 degrees from the side view. What it looks like from the front view, or let's imagine for a moment that you are the, the wind, so you're the, the volume of air that's traveling over this craft. It's going to look like this. So this is what it looks like when it's headed into the wind. So the equation for uh, drag force is this and you can see that at the top of the equation we have the surface area of the craft that's facing the volume of air and so what what you can do is you can tinker with this surface area um, you know to result in the smallest amount of drag force so what did we do to, um, you know, to minimize our drag force? Uh, the first thing that we did is concentrated on the arms. So we wanted these arms to be strong uh, in a crash. We also wanted these arms to be able to carry, you know, typical size speed controllers. Um, our Zeus speed controllers that we sell are very small, so that wasn't a problem. Uh, they're tiny little things. This is actually a representation of one there. Um, another popular one is the Rotor Geek speed controllers that a lot of people like to use. Those are 20 millimeters wide. This arm is 20 millimeters wide. Um, and in our analysis and our crash testing, it has resulted in a super strong, uh, super strong arm. It's very difficult to, to shear this guy off in a in an arm only crash. Uh, next thing that we did is these motor pods that sit under the motors. Uh, we wanted to really hug the motor so if you look at the, the top view here this hugs the OD of the motor. There's not a lot of excess material that's just arbitrarily on here. Uh, that's reducing weight but the most important thing here is with aerodynamic drag it's reducing the amount of surface area that's hitting the wind. Also, when this prop is spinning, and if you have material here sitting underneath the prop, you're going to get turbulent air, right? So you get inefficient movement of air from the prop, and you don't want that. Uh, the next thing we did is looked at what I call this front pod and this rear pod here. Uh, this front pod, we reduced the thickness here as much as we could, so we're hugging this camera this FPV camera uh, really as much as we possibly could to make this a small surface area. Then additionally in the rear the same thing applies so there's 
there's two components back here which is the video transmitter and the uh, RC receiver and we come in and we hug those as much as possible make this section as thin as possible uh, without reducing its durability and then also it's not some arbitrary length here so we made it as short as we could while still being able to get your components in here so that reduces the amount of surface area that is heading into the wind.